And this historically, when a sitting U.S. president withdrew, withdrew from the race for re-election to pass the baton to his vice president, one of the people telling his own personal story about Joe Biden is Senator Chris Murphy of Connecticut. Murphy, a longtime advocate for gun reform, recounted how President Biden turned to him for advice after the tragic mass shootings in Uvalde, Texas, and in Buffalo, New York. He consulted with him on a speech to build support for a gun safety bill, a speech that President Biden ultimately delivered as a passionate appeal to all Americans and specifically to Republicans in Congress. The children we've lost, the children we can save, for the nation we love, Let's hear the call and the cry. Let's meet the moment. Let us finally do something. Senator Murphy described the speech as perfect and deeply impactful and saying, quote, I'm not sure the historic 2022 gun bill would have passed without that speech. Senator Chris Murphy, Democrat of Connecticut, joins me now. Senator Murphy, it's great to see you. Thank you so much for joining me uh, here this evening. I just wanted to start by, I, I mean, I've been working in, I worked in Democratic politics for a long time. Uh, you've been uh, elected in Democratic politics for a long time. The last couple of days have been, I mean, the energy, the fundraising, how unified everyone is. It's been surprising in how fast it's happened to me. Has it been surprising to you? Uh, yeah, I mean, listen, I've, I've been in politics for a while, too, but um, I, I haven't lost my ability to be surprised. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I'm just so happy for this country and for Kamala Harris and for a lot of folks that have felt like democracy is on the line. We're having a little bit of a hard time getting up off the sidelines. Um, and what Joe Biden did is extraordinary. I mean, he recognized this moment. I don't think it was fair. I told that story mm. in part because I want people to understand how deeply, personally, intimately involved he was in all of these legislative successes. But he looked at the state of the party. He looked at the state of the race. And he made this just absolutely heroic, selfless decision to stand down, despite the fact that he had a path to victory, despite the fact that he's got this incredible legislative record, um, because he just thought it was good for the country. So, yeah, I, I, I keep coming back to this job year after year, deciding to run for reelection, because people surprise me. Mm -hmm. um, because over and over again, in a world and in a business that is filled with cynicism, um, people step up and do the right thing more often than you would think. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, still, I'm still surprised. You don't have to be a bad apple to be in politics. I think that's important for people to know. So let me ask you, because you just mentioned, and I know that you've worked with President Biden on so many different things. I mean, gun violence reform. You've worked with him on a range of foreign policy issues. He's got six months left in his presidency. He's going to speak tomorrow night. First of all, what do you hope to hear from him tomorrow night? What are you expecting? Well, I think the reason that Kamala Harris is this sort of best of both worlds candidate is because, you know, she is the next generation. She is going to be an inspirational, historic candidate. It's important to have a woman uh, on the top of the ticket running for president, a moment when women's rights are under assault. But she also is going to be able to carry forth all of the really amazing things that this administration has done. And so I hope Joe Biden just takes a beat and reminds the American public that without his leadership. Uh, we would not have rescued this country from COVID. Uh, we would not be growing jobs at a historic rate. Crime wouldn't be down by 20 percent. Joe Biden did those things and Kamala Harris helped him. And so I hope that he takes credit for that and reminds people um, of the reasons why there should be some interest in continuity. Um, uh, and I hope he talks a little bit from his heart about why he made this decision. I mean, part of the reason we love Joe Biden is because he does share himself with us. Mm -hmm. um, he, he does, um, you know, reach down deep inside in a way that a lot of political figures don't. And so I hope he shares a bit of his decision making process with us. Um, I, I think that would really round out this amazing, amazing moment. I think a lot of people would love to hear that. I, I totally agree with you. L let me ask you, I mean, you, you, you're a policy nerd, and I say that in a complimentary way, but you also have been through some tough campaigns. You've, you've seen people go through tough campaigns. You know, this has been a kind of a, a moment of elation for a lot of people over the past two days with all of the support, but this is going to be a bruising campaign. It's going to be hard. What are the things you think people out there should be aware of if they're sitting on their couch and think, 
This is all on the back. What, what is going to be really hard about it? What should people be prepared for? Yeah, listen, I think this is going to be a, a very tough campaign. And, and you already see, you know, some of the worst um, easily oozing out of the Republican infrastructure, right? There's just going to be some basic racism and misogyny that is going to infiltrate this campaign. And so we have to confront that head on. We have to call it out. Ultimately, I do not think it's a winning strategy for Republicans, but you've got to name it and shame it. Um, and then, you know, I, I just think you've got to turn this enthusiasm into actual action, right? We have to remind folks who today are excited about Kamala Harris that, you know, just sharing a tweet is not political action. You've got to go on the website and make a small donation. You've got to sign up for a volunteer shift. Donald Trump's political infrastructure is incredibly weak. A lot of people don't know this, but he kind of hasn't built much of a campaign. He was golfing mm -hmm. today. He's not out there on the campaign trail in the way that he was four years ago. So we now have a candidate who is going to appeal uh, to a whole new section of the electorate. And we have the ability to use the enthusiasm to outwork Republicans. So the message here is don't take anything for granted. Sign up to work, sign up to volunteer, make a contribution, um, turn this enthusiasm into actual work product. So we only have about 40 seconds left, but you're a professional. So let me ask you for people out there who are wondering, what can I do? What should I do? What should they do now? If they are excited, they want to defeat Donald Trump, how can average normal people out there watching on their couch get involved? Yes. Yeah, so, you know, one thing you could do is make a small donation, not just to Kamala Harris, but to my colleagues who are running for swing Senate seats all across the country. Tammy Baldwin was standing on that stage in Wisconsin. You should make a donation to her. We need to not only win the presidency, but we need to hold the United States Senate and win back the House of Representatives. And then the great thing about technology today is that even if you are in a blue state, even if you are a constituent of mine in Connecticut, I would love for you to help me. But I won't feel bad. I won't take it personally if you also sign up for a virtual phone bank in Pennsylvania, in Arizona. Arizona, in Wisconsin. So it's as easy as going to the DNC's website or to the presidential website to find out how you can be part of these voter turnout operations in these swing states. So that's a small smorgasbord of options for people who that, want to make a big difference. That, that's a perfect elevator pitch, Senator, and very generous, too. Senator Chris Murphy, thank you so much.